African culture is symbolic in every way from the cuisine to the attires and festivities. But probably the most important piece of African culture you might have missed is that cowrie shells were a popular means of exchange in many African tribes before decolonization. These shells were so widely traded that by 1800, they had established exchange rates with the French franc. However, when the French Empire expanded into Africa, Paris sought authority over these economic systems. This entailed levying taxes and sending military personnel to markets to force merchants into accepting French currency. By the 1930s, France had consolidated control over the monetary systems of French-speaking Africa. This increased influence gave Paris substantial extrajudicial powers, allowing it to exploit African labor and resources at below market costs. Meanwhile, finished goods created in France were shipped back to Africa at exorbitant costs. This system of exploitation, known as Frantifrique, exhibited French neocolonialism at its most intrusive and unrelenting. Frantifrique allowed France to maintain economic superiority and political influence over its former colonies, even after they obtained nominal independence. This control over monetary policy and economic resources enabled France to maintain its dominance while extracting cash from African countries to fuel its own economic growth. Fran de Freak's legacy continues to affect economic and political dynamics in French-speaking Africa today, demonstrating the long-term impact of colonialism and imperialism on the continent's growth. Following the end of World War II, France made considerable reforms to its economic and colonial policies. Joining the Bretton Woods system, which created fixed exchange rates with the US dollar, caused the French franc to fall in value. This transition coincided with a wave of decolonization that swept over Africa, posing both obstacles and opportunities. To keep its grip on its African territory, France launched the CFA franc in 1945 and forced its colonies to adopt it. Initially, the CFA franc was tied to the French franc at a rate of 1.7 to 1, which was later adjusted to 2 to 1 by 1948. By overvaluing the CFA franc, France maintained its economic dominance while undermining Africa's export-oriented sectors. In 1958, France undermined genuine decolonization efforts by appointing local collaborators as heads of state and giving them ceremonial independence. These puppet leaders administered France's neocolonial empire, preserving the franc zone and tolerating French military bases. Notably, Guinea stood out by refusing the offer and instead developing its own currency rather than adopting the CFA franc. In retaliation, France responded hard against Guinea, reducing pensions, disrupting power supplies, and even seeking to deny Kenya's UN membership. France retaliated against Kenya in severe ways, producing hyperinflation by flooding the country with counterfeit cash and financing armed anti-government organizations. These efforts demonstrated France's intention to preserve economic and political influence over its former colonies, even at the cost of their sovereignty and prosperity. The legacy of France's neocolonial practices continues to shape relations with its former African colonies, emphasizing colonialism's long-term impact on the continent. Guinea's defiance of the CFA franc had serious consequences, since efforts to bring the country back into compliance ultimately failed to remove its leader, Sekou Toure. However, Guinea's economy has never fully recovered from the tragedy. Similarly, when Togo attempted to break away from the CFA franc, France replied with a severe display of strength. In January 1963, Togo's leader, Sylvanus Olympio, was assassinated with allegations of French involvement. Despite popular concerns, official records are strictly hidden, fueling claims of French imperialism. Efforts to disguise French control continued, with the CFA franc split into two different currencies, covering Central and West African republics by the mid-1970s. Although both central banks were technically Africanized and relocated to Yaounde and Dakar, respectively, no significant policy adjustments were made. France maintained extensive influence with veto power over the bank's governing statutes. Member states were required to deposit half of their exchange reserves with the French Treasury, with an additional 20% reserved for financial liabilities. As a result, member nations may only use 30% of their own finances. 
Furthermore, all foreign exchange transactions were obliged to pass via the French Treasury, strengthening French control and influence over these countries' monetary affairs. This fiscal strategy is implemented by operating accounts kept at the French Treasury. These accounts, which are denominated in euros, effectively provide France access to member states' foreign exchange reserves when they are credited. In contrast, when in debit, central banks must pay interest to the French Treasury. In essence, CFA franc member states pay France to keep their money. To add to the obscurity of the arrangement, the French Treasury does not reveal how these monies are spent, even to the CFA franc states themselves. This lack of openness raises questions and encourages doubt regarding France's genuine management of these assets. If France were to reinvest the funds created in Africa for French gain, it is clear that the CFA plan is a profitable endeavor for France, with French businesses earning significant rewards alongside the French government. Several French multinational corporations, like Total Energies, Areva, and Vinci, have built large presences in Africa. This presence not only provides France with strategic resources, such as uranium from countries such as Gabon, which is critical to France's nuclear energy sector, but it also secures access to other key resources, such as crude oil from Gabon and Mauritania, iron ore from Mauritania, and agricultural commodities from Togo and Benin. Furthermore, French National Vinci Boulevard controls the bulk of West Africa's key ports, increasing France's economic influence in the region. Former French President Jacques Chirac once revealed that a considerable amount of the funds deposited in French banks were derived from African exploitation, emphasizing the economic importance of France's African possessions. To retain its control, France has regularly engaged militarily on the continent interfering in conflicts and assisting corrupt governments. The CFA Franc's structure allows for easy repatriation of profits and cash, resulting in massive capital flight from nations such as Ivory Coast, Equatorial Guinea, Congo, Gabon, and Cameroon. This capital flight deprives these countries of critical resources that could have been reinvested domestically to alleviate poverty and drive economic growth. Despite advocates emphasizing the CFA Franc's stability, the lack of monetary sovereignty limits the policy options accessible to member governments. While some argue that low inflation rates in CFA member countries like Ivory Coast indicate stability, the disparity in poverty rates compared to neighboring countries like Ghana suggests that the benefits of stability may not always translate into higher living standards for the population. Furthermore, several CFA member nations have witnessed sluggish or declining economic growth highlighting the CFA Franc's limits in fostering long-term development. Senegal's economic condition in 2016 was comparable to that of 1960, whilst Cameroon, Congo, and Gabon failed to achieve their respective peaks of 1986, 1984, and 1976. This suggests that these countries' economy have been stagnant or growing at a low rate for a long time. However, societal debates in CFA member countries have increasingly centered on finding alternatives to the current monetary structure. One major suggestion is to form a regional currency bloc outside of French control, with some proponents recommending using ICAOs as a foundation. This will shift CFA franc member nations toward Nigeria, which accounts for a substantial portion of regional GDP and is a net exporter of oil as opposed to numerous West African counties that are net importers. Nonetheless, efforts to implement these changes meet opposition from France, which has taken steps to thwart similar initiatives. Legislation tabled in the French Senate in January 2021 proposes to convert the West African CFA franc into the ECO, abolish the operational accounts, and remove French personnel from central banks by 2027. Despite these reforms, France aims to keep effective control over the placement of African monetary reserves, raising questions about the genuineness of the proposed adjustments. Individual nations might eventually establish their own central banks and currencies, which would be tied to a single regional unit at a variable rate. This strategy would grant monetary sovereignty to the 14 nations that make up the CFA franc zone, which includes roughly 200 million people. However, resistance to breaking away from French rule remains, particularly among African elites who benefit from the current system. 
Overcoming this problem will necessitate coordinated efforts throughout the CFA Frank Zone, with an emphasis on replacing established interests with legislators committed to self-directed development. Such a shift must come from within, challenging the established quo while fighting the corrupting influence of complacency. Thanks for watching till the end, we hope you enjoyed it. Please do not forget to subscribe and leave a like so more people can see this.